Hey, welcome everyone to another episode of Photographer's Favorites. Thanks so much for joining me. This is the show where I pick five of my favorite photos from other photographers, and my guest picks five of their favorite photos, and we talk about everything we like about them. Today, I'm lucky enough to have with me Kelly Lukey. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you for having yeah. me. I appreciate it. Sure thing. Yeah, excited to have you on. Um, how's photography been lately? It's been good. Um, it, we're in the middle of mixed season here. So we've got our nesting birds, our great blue herons have started, our great egrets are starting to get their breeding plumes, and then we still Ooh. have our winter birds. So one of my favorite wildlife management areas just reopened. They closed for um, a couple months for hunting. So they're back yep. open. So I made a trip down there yesterday to see what was going on. Nice. And just so everyone's aware, what uh, part of the world are you from? I am on the coast of South Carolina. Gotcha. So down um, close to Savannah, actually. Nice, nice. This hooded merganser you just shared, unbelievable. Like, Thank you. such perfect lighting. Yeah, so that pond is actually interesting. They've unfortunately just cleared all around it. They're doing some construction, but what it has allowed for is much better light um, coming in there. So sure. I was happy to um, get some nice dark shots that weren't just flat. Yeah, definitely. Did you go specifically and position yourself just to try and get that back rim light kind of thing? Or I did, did it just yeah. Work I've out? Yeah. been watching and I've gone a few times just to see um, how the light has changed. I run by this pond frequently. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, because of all the clearing, less birds have been showing up. Sure. But on this particular day, there were probably about 30 in there. Oh, wow. So, um, I was just hoping they would stay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. They're not easy. I know that, you know, these ducks are so skittish. They are this pond. They are used to people in this area because people walk a lot. So they're a gotcha. little less skittish, but yeah, with all that construction, anything that changes, you know, it changes yep. the behavior. Yeah. Yeah. And I've always loved, uh, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. The, this, these are like some perfect examples here, the, the pastel tones that you get and the just like clean looks in a lot of your photos. It's such a great style that you've developed and it's really cool that you have a recognizable style in your photography. Thank you. Yeah, so the Merganser was um, my challenge. I have a hard time going dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you look at all of them, they're mostly light. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you like the light stuff, but you do it I once in a while there. I do it sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And actually I started off doing more of it. I think when I didn't have as good of equipment and I couldn't shoot light as well, I did more gotcha. dark. And so, yeah. yeah. Excellent. All right. You ready to get into the show? Absolutely. All right, let's do it. So we'll start out with uh, one of the photos you chose first uh, from my good friend, Jamin up in Alaska. And uh, speaking of the dark moody kind of thing, this one is just outstanding. Um, I love the rim light on this and the, the sense of curves in this photo are really nice too. Um, no real hard angles other than just like the pointy beak, but everything else is just kind of nice and curvy. And then, you know, zero distractions in the background. And the, the puff of breath is so great to just show you that it's cold. It's not like in the middle of a warm summer kind of thing. Although for him, it could be just an early morning in the summer. It's probably freezing. Yep. Um, and then the other thing that really stood out to me is the color palette of this one which I'm sure uh, kind of got your attention, right? That that blue to gold gradient. Yep. Yeah, so he uh, <laughs> he played a fast one on me yesterday because I kept debating between shots of his. Originally, I loved his wimbrel, and that's what drew me in because we, we get a lot of wimbrels here, and of course yeah. not during nesting season. Um, so when you had kind of zoned in on that one during your show with him, you know, oh. we decided to choose another one anyway. Yeah. I was having a conversation with him and he said, oh, this is the one from today. And I said, that's the one I want. And then I looked yeah. at your comments and you said the exact thing I said to him, which is, how did you hold on to this for so long? Because he <laughs> shot this, what did you say, a couple of years ago, I think he yep. said? I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I said, well, what else did you have that day that, that drew your eye in? I mean, this is incredible to me, so... Um, and I love these silhouette shots because I don't feel like they're they're my thing. I don't feel that good at, you know, at doing them. So I always gotcha. admire other people that do them really well. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. He's got such a perfect profile on this one. Um, and then it's so interesting. It's that kind of in-between silhouette. It's not a total blackout. So we can still see, you know, the yes. the rim lighting kind of shows some of that detail. But then you can see the the characteristic kind of white patch on the cheek yep. of the red redneck grebe. Um so he's, it's really cool that it's kind of that in-between uh, He's detailer. really good at that kind of light, I think. Yeah, um, yeah he is. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, definitely. All right, 
uh, we'll stay in some colder territories and bring up a snowy photo for you. I love it. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I have a thing for snow. So whenever I see um, snow falling like that, um, it just draws me right in and just makes me want to be there. Yep. This looks like maybe a new snow because there's not a lot of snow on the ground. You're right. Um, maybe an early snow. The yeah. contrast between that dark and the light um, and that little bit of the, the haziness that you've got in the background. It looks like it's really yeah. coming down. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, I really liked on this one how it almost feels like, and it's not, but it almost feels like the snow is in more focus than the bison. But if you look here, like the, the horns are really clear and sharp. So they're totally in focus, but the snow is kind of obscuring it. And it almost made it a little bit kind of more abstracty in nature, you know, uh, yeah. just because you're looking through so much snow and that snow is so sharp and, and detailed there. Yeah. I think that it, it reminds me when it's raining really hard, what images look like, um, you know, they kind of get that a little bit of blurred effect because it's just coming down so hard. Exactly. It, it looks like the snow is doing the same thing. Yeah, you lose that contrast on the mm -hmm. image and the, all the tones become more muted, which this looks yeah. like it generally had muted tones anyway. But um, yeah, and then it's neat how the like the nostrils still stand out, you know, like through the snow there. So yeah, and the little bit these, of grass that he's eaten. Yeah, these tiny little details that you start to pick up on after you've looked at the photo for a while um, are really neat. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And uh, something, have you ever seen them and photographed them in the wild? I certainly haven't. I have, but not, yeah, not like that. No. Okay. Not like <laughs> <photos>. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So next time now there's something to, to strive for, right? I know it's gorgeous. Yeah. All right. Let's hit the next one. Back to some beautiful waterfowl. Um, yeah. Uh, just a favor. And I know Larry was working his butt off to get these shots this year. He was messaging me um, ahead of time uh, talking really? about how, yeah, he's like, these grebes are just driving me nuts. I can't get near them. I'm like, just be patient, man. You'll get them. You'll get them. And then I remember, I don't know if it was this exact one, but one of the first opportunities he had when it came in really close, he was messaging me. He's like, it finally happened, man. I got them. Um, and such a serene scene like that's the word that's the word that uh pops into my head when i look at this it's just serene uh super calm again with the real muted tones so no vibrant colors uh which would be fine but it just kind of helps to set a mood to it yeah. and uh compositionally i really like what he did you know i feel like a lot of people are kind of afraid to go with a little bit more of a centered composition and Sometimes I think images really call for it. And this one calls for it perfectly because we have a perfect, basically like if we draw a line down the middle of this bird and it's, it's reflection and then across the, the, um, the water line there, it's just a perfect cross right in the middle of the image. Uh, it just divides the image so nicely. And again, I'm not, usually I'm not a big fan of a square composition, but yeah. it works absolutely perfectly here. It really does. And you, all of my notes, um, are, that I wrote are, are the same basically. Um, okay. And I love that with the subject in the center, but because that head is off to the side, it does throw it off just a little bit. So it's not yeah. completely balanced. You've got a little bit of that off center to help it. Um, and I was out yesterday, you know, this is a species that I see all the time and I really don't think about shooting them until yeah. I saw this image. And I saw a group of them yesterday and um, I couldn't get close to them, just like he was saying yesterday. But I, but I yeah. will definitely try again because this is absolutely stunning, and it just shows you that a bird that, you know, isn't super colorful or flashy can still be just drop dead gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and and in a scene that has no color too. So you know, the background has, yeah. I mean, it's practically gray here. Um, yeah, and that, it's another very detail. Monoprice. Dramatic, except it is the, and i want to point i can't point but um the the little bit of brown just throws it off but the feathers yeah. almost tie into the background but then yep. you've got that little bit of white that sets off the edge of the feathers it's gorgeous oh yeah right along here yep and then yep. that clean break of the water you can tell it's that so there's perfect. probably not a lot of activity you know it might just be uh, one or two birds you know a lot of times when totally. you have so many birds on the water you just get it it's too churned up and i like Correct. that straight line it's beautiful yeah definitely yeah and it's neat these reflections like this. So this is an interesting thing that I find with perspective when you're shooting like this uh, with water level is when you get so low to the water as he is here, 
yep. you um, it's almost impossible to get like a true clear mirror reflection. If he had lifted up a foot, that reflection would yes. probably be so much more clear and, yep. and almost an exact match for the bird. But to me, there's, I don't think one is necessarily better than the other, but something that's neat about these kind of more smeared or uh, distorted reflections when you're super mm -hmm. low is that they don't take as much um, of your attention as the actual bird. So it's, it becomes a secondary element, whereas a, a straight mirror reflection would be almost as, as equal or powerful as the bird itself. Yeah, you're right. You know, and I was just talking to another photographer about it's not always best to be all the way low. Yeah. Um, sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. And you just kind of have to feel out the scene. Um, totally. Yesterday I was there was trash where I was shooting and I actually picked up a beer can to, just to prop up my <laughs> my tripod, just, my monopod just a little bit um, yeah. more so that. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one last detail before we jump on the next photo that I really liked about this is how all the feathers here and the head and the eye and the beak are all just so sharp. And the feathers in the back here are so just because they're also fluffy, but starting to be just a little bit out of focus. It's a wonderful contrast. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, it's a wonderful contrast of the the sharpness here and then the softness on the back of the bird that I just also really liked on this one. Yep. And I, I love to print and I would love to see that one in print. I would love to see that in like a metallic photo paper where you just have that luminous showing up. It would be beautiful. Oh yeah. That's a great, that's a Absolutely great point. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It would be a good one for that. No doubt. Ooh, dramatic. Yeah. Right. Look at that. Wow. So this is from Florida, huh? Yeah. Wow. I know. Yeah. So I've never photographed um, things like this. So I find that fascinating. No, Nope. So I wonder what kind of lens. Let's see. A 50 millimeter. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. I love the details of the scales that you can see on the outline, how they, I want to point again. I can't, but the yeah. curve <laughs> and then they kind of fade. So you've got sharp, yeah. sharp focus um, at the top and then it fades to soft in the back, the little hand or the the leg gripping whatever on. you call them i know yeah, whatever yeah. that appendage is gripping onto the twig and then the brown leaf um just sticking up there it's beautiful yeah yeah matt's uh matt's use of lighting is always so good in his uh wildlife and macro and reptiles and stuff and i think he said this was just a single flash overhead with like a soft box kind of thing um and yeah i had no idea these existed in florida these chameleons and no, he was exactly. like yeah there's certain pockets of them yeah super south maybe yeah i believe so yep yeah but uh yeah, and that green with the black that that color combination right? is always beautiful yep yeah the green just jumps right out at you um I, I agree with everything you said one of the little details i really liked is just how you can see that weird hand that it has gripping the yep. thing because it's like it's like a mitten you know like it doesn't it's have like fingers yeah. yeah so it's such a unique kind of shaped hand on any creature it's not something i'm used to seeing with mammals or anything like that um and uh everything you said you know the color the black all that and then just the curve of the perch matching kind of the curve of the back of the chameleon there it all just yep. works so well and yeah. the shades of green if you really look into it you see all the different shades of green and yellow it's yeah. so neat yeah. yeah i would love to see this one larger like this one you can tell it yes. has the detail and so yep. you know it's unfortunately the nature of instagram right we don't get to see a lot I of that know. additional stuff and the eye look at the detail on the eye all those I'm little bumps and everything eye. yeah yeah, so cool. yeah cool. seeing that like blown up on a big screen or uh like you uh, said on the wall would be really cool yep oh wow yeah i mean just adorable just it's ridiculously funny. adorable um, great use of the, the pastel tones, whether it be morning or evening, I'm not sure, uh, late afternoon, she said, yeah, so evening light there. Uh, Alicia is so good with that kind of dusky, right around um, dusk uh, lighting. And, you know, this is tough. I'd be curious to know if the sun was actually shining on this or if this was like just the tail end, like bright sky kind of giving that rim light there because it doesn't look like full on direct sun, but... Uh, it, maybe it's just kind of muted in some way. I don't know. It's gorgeous. Um, downy oh, birds like this. Yeah. These young chicks always just glow so nicely in backlight like that. And I also really like how she gave it more space. So, you know, it's not just cropped into the little chick. Um, it makes them appear even smaller cause it's small in the frame and the use of going vertical like that 
is another interesting choice, I think, uh, but again, works well because it, it helps set up a really nice dark to light gradient in this image. Oh. And the dark bottom just really helps draw your eye right up to the, the pop of light of that little puff ball. <laughs> yeah. And I have a thing for verticals. I love shooting vertical and I do. I think, yes, I do. I'm, I'm always shooting vertical. I like um, that you can get more of the, the scene, uh, you know, the up and down for that yep. very reason, the gradient of the color or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, and in this one, the bird just looks so vulnerable. Um, really does. And that, you know, he could just get lost in that little indentation there, which of course that's how they would hide, you know, if yeah. anything came, it would. But um, I just think it's beautiful. The hazy purple mauve tones she has in there. I think it's really unusual. It's just so pretty. Totally. I was just going to say the same thing. You don't see those colors very often on, on a beachy scene like this, you know? Browns, oh. tans, golden light, sure, but this color not as often. No, I love it. Yeah, yeah. that rim light just you know that just makes seals the deal. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, these guys with the rim light are just the perfect subject for that, and there's just yeah. you can't help but let out an audible awe when you see one of these. You know, know, they're so cute. <laughs> I know, and I would love this again in print. One thing I've learned about printing with baby birds is that. Um, going really big actually doesn't work because it makes them look too big and, and when I've done it, yeah I don't, I don't like them when they're too too big i mean you don't yeah. it doesn't make tiny but i've made that mistake a couple times and um so i like to keep the baby birds just a little bit smaller that's a really good point yeah because at a certain point if you enlarge them enough they're going to be much larger than life size and then it yeah, takes that away okay but it looks weird yeah it, they just look um i've done it a few times and i won't ever do it again so if i printed this i would print it you know maybe 11 by 14 11 by 16, sure something like yeah. that in that range. Yeah, very interesting point. Yeah, one yeah. I'd never thought of either. But it makes yeah. sense as soon as you said it, too. Yeah. All right, well, there's something uh, small. Look at that scene. <laughs> yeah. Small but dramatic. Right. What is the bird? I don't even know what. Bald eagle. It is a bald eagle. Yep. That's amazing. So, where was this taken? In Maryland? Yeah, so uh -huh. I'm not 100%, but I'm, well, actually, I'm pretty close to 100% that this is taken at uh, Conowingo Dam, okay, which is like the most popular place in this area yeah, to photograph but I've them. I've never seen a shot like that. Exactly. <gasps> I love it. Yeah. So a, a misty, steamy morning, it looks like. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's beautiful. The bird being silhouetted, but the clouds um, or the mist is um, illuminated up, up top. That's beautiful. Colors are gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, to come up with a unique scene at this place where th literally thousands and thousands of photographers are sharing thousands and thousands of images every year is one heck of an achievement. And Kerm did it perfectly here. And they're almost always close up with the eagle yep. or something in its talons or, yep. and, 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 you know, those are great shots. But this to totally. me is absolutely, that would be beautiful in print also. Gorgeous. Yeah, and this is one you can go massive with uh, just because it's all about the scene, you know. Yep. Um, and I also love how, I mean, if we look at the percentage of how many pixels that bird takes up in this photo, it is minuscule. You know, it's like yeah. probably less than 1% of all the pixels in the image. Yet, when I first look at this photo, that's right where my eye goes. Like, I see the bird instantly. Right. And if the bird it's, wasn't there, the scene would not have the same impact. Correct. Yeah. You it's take that out. It would not, well, it balances it for one thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it wouldn't be anything the same. Yeah, I very much agree. And then when you really dig your eye in, you get to see some of the trees just kind of ghostly through the, um, like the oh, mist up there that. in the background there. Yeah, they're just kind of barely showing through. So there's just like a cool texture. You can see a couple of tree trunks right there from like some oh, lighter trees. It, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's neat to finally just kind of... it it really makes it feel like you're st you're there just kind of peering through the mist, you know, because after some time you get to see more depth to the photo. That light is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I've shot similar conditions there, but never to this uh, effect, never this well. What kind of you know? year was it? Does he say? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think he mentions it there and he shared yeah. it in January, but it was probably shot earlier in the season, um, yeah. you know, probably the year before. But, That's uh, really gorgeous. Yeah, those color tones. It's got that same uh, golden to blue color tone that we had on the redneck grebe from Jamin in the beginning, which is such yep. a great color palette. Yeah. Yep. 
it really works so well together. Back to a lovely clean photo. Um, and again, monochromatic except for the brown that's showing up on this, uh, this Drake pintail. Showing off the classic pintail there. Uh, I love how the, the water, it, you can tell it's not glassy calm. There's some waves going on there, but they're not huge. And they, the photographer in this case was so low that they were able to kind of blur out a lot of the foreground using those little bit of waves. Uh, which makes it so it's like the only thing in focus is the subject. And I love when that happens. I think that's such a cool effect. Um, and then the little white spots back here just kind of, you know, tonally match into the white on the neck there. And the soft light just shows off the intricate patterns of these, these males that have frustratingly eluded me for many, many years. Oh, I mean, this <laughs> When he posted this image, I could not stop staring at it because first of all, it's the one that's probably that I chose most in my style. So I just couldn't stop staring at it. Um, that those soft, soft colors. Um, yeah. And yeah, the sea almost looks like, it almost looks like he's floating in a sea of ice. I mean, it just looks yeah. frothy or I, I don't know what it is. It's absolutely beautiful. The whites that he's got there and then the blue um, and then the feathers. Um, those feathers are just amazing. Like the way wow. these are laying. I just kept yeah. zooming in on it and I was like, oh my God. Yeah. 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 So if I were going to print this, it would look absolutely beautiful on a fine art paper. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, nice um, and soft. The, the tones that you mentioned too, it really does. I, I didn't think ice at first, but as soon as you said it, I also did think it really has a feeling of being cold. There's something oh, cold yeah. about this image, just oh, with yeah. that, the tonality overall, uh, it gives you the appearance like this doesn't feel like a warm summer image in any way, no. shape or form. <laughs> no, I'm sure, I'm sure Aaron was cold while he was shooting this. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. This scene looks cold. And that's what I love about it. I love it when you can feel what's going on. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah it transports you there, which is yeah. a great thing. Nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful one. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so I have been this. I love this. And I have been trying to get a shot like this. In fact, yesterday I sat at some cattails. Um, oh, nice. Oh, yeah. I think it's so cute. Oh, my goodness. Isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. The colors, that green, um, the little the little foot holding on to the top of that cattail there, the textures. Yeah, that's beautiful. Chickadees do the best poses, don't they? Yeah, they do. And look at the background. Yeah. Usually when usually when I see those cattails, it would be very hard to get a nice um, clean background like that. Yeah, no kidding. Yep. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I also like it when you can get the birds when they're eating the taking the little tufts out of the. Uh, the yeah, you cat. know, I haven't seen that yet. And somebody was talking to me about it the other day, and I, it had never dawned on me that anything ate the seeds out of these. They do. Yeah. Yeah. So common shot around here i haven't gotten it yet but um but see i like this one because it's different i've never seen one where there's not the tufts coming out and a bird gotcha. trying to get at it yeah. yeah yeah so our chickadees will eat that nice that's really yeah. cool i love the uh the kind of soft overhead lighting too uh, it really works with the pose it's coming in slightly from the left and above i guess because it looks like the bottom and the right of yep. this are a little bit darker and the bird is turned perfectly for that lighting uh, cause if it was turned the other way, um, the light might not be hitting it the same way. Uh, and yeah, just everything you said, the, the pose and that background and the fact and that the it's eye. not completely uh -huh. monotone background. I like too. There's, there's a little bit of Brown, some more yellowy green, like the greens are different. It's not just yep. that. And I, it's not that I don't, I dislike when it's just a single smooth color, but I just tend to like it better when there's some variation back there. Yeah, it gives it more of a textured appearance. Yep. Um, yeah, and um, and the eye. I love that there's just a little bit of light on the eye there up at the yeah. top corner. Yeah, yeah. It works and the perfectly. pose of the bird, you can't get any more perfect than that. No, and then the, like even, ready to flee the scene. <laughs> it really does, and even with the subtle curve of the rest of the cattail, just kind of mat, you know heading in the same direction as the bird there and everything. Yeah, it all works so well. That's beautiful. His images always are. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's always great with that lighting. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Look at the the colors in this one are incredible. So many great tones that all work together. Man, it's weird. This one like takes you a while to kind of figure out. It's like 
I, I can't tell what's in the foreground, what's in the background there. Um, and, uh, which is all a good thing. Uh, I'm not saying that in a negative way. Um, I, I just really like how much texture there is and it almost feels like, it's weird to say, but it almost feels like the lead, it's like a rain back there. You know, uh, I don't know how else to describe it. Down. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, the, it's like a magical fairy tale land. I mean, just that little bit of space in between the leaves, I think is what does it. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, excellent use of foreground too, to just kind of make you feel that you're kind of embedded in that scene there as the viewer. I absolutely love that. And um, I love the way the green is kind of arching over top of it here. It just feels like a subtle framing element to kind of just keep, keep your attention here. And, um, you know, again, like, I just love how bold the moose stands out in this scene because everything is lighter in the background for the most part. And then we have the dark moose um, kind of just really just pops right out of it, uh, which is in the scene like this. This is one of those where there's so much going on, but yet your eye still goes right to the subject. And that's a, not an easy thing to do. No. And he's the subject's in the center again. And I yeah. love it. It looks like he's just enveloped in this forest. Of, yeah. And I grew up out West. So what I love about this is that it just um, captures the change of the season so well. So you've still got some green um, in there, but the yellow, and I'm assuming they're aspens, but I'm not certain, um, sure. you know, the, the yellow of the aspens, um, just the change of the seasons. It's just right there. Yep. Um, and it just makes me want to be in that scene. And you can tell he's nice and low because you've got that that foliage at the bottom, just totally. making it look like the moose is, again, enveloped in the forest. Well, um, and how cool that the yellow green colors we have up here are then mirrored down here with like yellow flowers and the green oh, yeah. foliage as well. It's oh, like, come I love on. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's to me, this is just magical. And I had a hard time choosing from Peter's. Um, I met Peter when I was shooting um, out in Minnesota a few years ago and he okay. has a great collection of images but this one kept standing out to me because it just looked like some sort of fairy tale land and you've got this big huge moose but the scale of it again there's some distance there so it doesn't yeah. you know it's not in your face um yes. and this would be beautiful printed if i lived out west i would want this huge in my house like yeah. 30 by 40 with a wide <laughs> mat and a big wood frame i mean it's just gorgeous yeah, totally. And uh, I like that you pointed out how small it is in the frame. Um, you know, it, moose are giant, so it's it's easier for us to see them big and close a lot of the times. But yeah, when you can kind of still show how small they can be in their habitat, you know, yeah. it's just impressive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love this one. Yeah, it's well done. Very well done. It's a th it's very thoughtfully composed. And again, another vertical image that is important because that's where it's including all this color up top. You know, you're going horizontal and losing all that is a very yep. different effect. Yep. No. Yeah, I love it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cute. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Right in the center <laughs> again. We picked several that were, weren't we? We did. Ones? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love the colors. So, yeah. um, yeah, this satisfies my artistic side. I just, the colors right there, um, soft, um, but yet vibrant at the yes. same time. Um, not overdone um, and kind of muted. I love that the, the deer fades at the bottom. Yep. Um, and you've got all that fade that, that hides um, the chest and the legs um, and the ears. Look at those ears. I know. <laughs> Who Come couldn't on. love those ears? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that is beautiful. I'm just trying love, to read about it while I'm looking at it here. I love that it's oh. chewing too. And you can see like the jaw is just like oh, a yeah. little bit sideways there. So uh, it's just kind of, uh, you know, just gives a little bit more character or a little bit of silliness to it, uh, oh, to I that super it. alert expression. And the eyes, look at the eyes. He's the light the in them is just gorgeous, is right? And then the ears, those fuzzy, furry, <laughs> yeah. the white matches the the white that's in the eyes and then down on the chin that's beautiful yeah having those ears both so symmetrically forward like that i think is really what makes this photo because if either ear is turned off just a little bit i think it loses that 
that focus that that deer has on the photographer in this case. Yeah, that's what... perfect symmetry right there. Everything yeah. is straight on except for the chewing. Everything yes. is if you cut in half. Yeah. I know. Even like this dark line down the middle of the head, you know? Yep. Yeah. And that works well as a square. I never know if people put squares on just because they're on Instagram and if it's a square or if that's how they would crop it. But this one looks really good as a square. That's a great point, Kelly. I agree with you completely. I feel like so many photos I see on Instagram feel like they would do better not as a square. And yeah. somebody they just did it because that's what it feels like you have to do so many times. Mm -hmm. um, and But then there are other photos, and it's I don't see it commonly, especially even in my own photography, but sometimes square is just the right way to go, and this is one of them. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so we had two because Aaron's, I think, worked really well as a square yes. also. And this yeah, one, very much agree. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> I loved your reaction right on the beginning because that's like the, that's, yeah. that's the proper reaction. Yes. <laughs> I'm all about cute and pretty. That's what I like. So that just satisfies that for me. right there. Yeah. Well, that was yeah. a perfect way to wrap it up then. So yeah. we did it. That was a good show. Oh, Excellent. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, you are very welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, is, I hope to is, meet you someday if you ever come down this way. Let me know. Definitely. Yeah, we'll definitely try and have to have to try and make that happen, I should say. Yeah. Um, is this the best place for people to follow you online right here on Instagram or is it the website as well? Yeah, no, on Instagram. Yeah, I mean, okay. I have my website, but yeah, Instagram for sure. And I still do Facebook, but um, I spend more time on Instagram than I do on Facebook. Gotcha. Excellent. So uh, what do you have coming up? What's what's in the future, in the near future for uh, photography for you? Is it just a little bit more of the nesting season kicking in kind of stuff? Um, yeah, I'm going to try to finish up getting or try to get some of our winter birds before they leave. Um, right now we've got our tundra swans here, which last year we didn't get any. So we yesterday okay. we counted 96. So we have Whoa. at least some. Not, in past years we've had hundreds. Yeah. So, um, I'd like to get it back out with them. We should have lots of avocets down there and um, white pelicans and all those species nice. will be leaving just as our great egrets will start displaying. So gotcha. yeah, that's what I got going on. Great time of year. I'm going to try and I'm probably tomorrow. I'm going to be in the water with tundra swans. That's my goal tomorrow. So we'll see how oh, it goes. You are? Yeah. I'm going to get in the, uh, in the dry suit and get in the water with them. So. Oh, be fun. And yes, but I'll tell you. So I was out yesterday. My problem with our tundra swans is that we've got alligators mixed in there. So I that's can not going to work so well. <laughs> no, for most of our birds. In fact, the grebes that I was shooting yesterday too. So I have to be really careful. So I prefer those really cold days when I know that even if the alligators might start moving, I can probably outrun them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's that's such a great point. It's something that I don't have to think about or fear up here at all. Um, yes. And it certainly changes the game. Like when I go to Florida, I'm not getting in the water. <laughs> no, and waterfall is really hard because the winter is when we have them. But so many of those nice low shots, there's only certain days you can do that here that I'm comfortable with. Doing. Sure. Yeah, um, definitely. But yeah, well, no I'm shots worth uh, losing uh, your life or a limb, you know? No, I'm always saying that to myself when I'm out there, but it is nice to be down low. So it is. anyway, it is. well, good luck. I look forward to the photos from that. Same to you. Thanks again. All right. Thank you.